You are watching Bloomberg West, where we focus on technology and the future of business. I'm Emily Chang. New technology means new security threats. Social media sites push us to share more personal information than ever before. Smart coffee makers and washing machines are constantly collecting data about our daily habits. How can you be security savvy while trying out the latest in tech? In today's Security 101, Chertoff Group's principal, Brian White, joins me here in the studio with his tips for protecting yourself when using social media, Bitcoin, and smart devices in your home a personal curiosity of mine because I also want to try out mm -hmm. the latest in technology. I feel like that's part of my job. But when it comes to social media, are, are we more or less secure than we are using the rest of the internet? I think that we have to be careful in what we do and do because you're putting so much information about yourself uh, available to the public. You know, people look to that information when they're looking to hire you and then some people post where they are, you know, when they go on vacation and you're basically putting a dossier on your, about yourself out to the public. Now, some of your tips. Once a photo is posted, it's always online. It's always online. It gets cached and it's very difficult to ever take it away. What about in private social networks? Is that better than they, it indicates that it is going to be better, but I think it's going to be very difficult for you ever to be truly confident that something that you post online is removed. Never tag your location. Why? Because criminals can take advantage of you being away to go and steal goods from your house. I mean, there are repeated cases of somebody posting that they are in New York and their home in San Francisco is empty, and they go ahead and know that they have an open invitation to steal. Every app asks for locations these days. They do because they want to geolocate you to give you directed advertising. I think you have to be careful with where you automatically, you know, uh, check in. Uh, what I do, uh, my personal uh, habit is there's very few apps that really need to know where I am. Mm -hmm. Maps needs to know because I, I take advantage of directions. But on the other hand, Yelp, I don't, you know, need to know. Yelp doesn't need to know where I am. Okay. Beware of shortened links. Yes. Which are everywhere in social media they also yeah. just look better yes well they're easier to you know put into a hashtag and the problem though is that it's difficult to determine which one's actually real so it's just like the basics that we discussed a few weeks ago put the link back into a browser and then then see what comes up that way rather than clicking on it because if you click on a link then that may introduce malware into your system So put it into a browser before yes. you click on it okay always out. That seems standard, but yes. people forget. People do forget, and the systems like you to stay always logged in. So it's always important every time that you get into a social media site, log out and then log back in. How much do hackers track social media? I mean, is this something they track more closely, or do we think they care more than they actually do? You know, I, do, I actually think that they develop a lot of their information based on targeting individuals. They can determine your password. They can determine other key characteristics that you may that, that may give them indication about how to take advantage of you. Okay. Um, what about the Internet of Things? You know, from wristbands to glasses. You know, everything has a chip in it yeah. these days. It seems. Does that put us? at greater risk. Well, first, I think it offers great promise. Uh, but at the same token, we have to be careful about what is connected. There are a lot of cases of people saying, OK, well, my refrigerator is connected. But, you know, but if that's connected, is it connected to your home network? Because if it is, then somebody could take advantage of that IP address and jump into your network. How much can somebody really learn, though, from your connected refrigerator or very, your coffee maker? Well, very little. But what they could do, so first, they could do some nuisance. Uh, so they can perhaps, you know, mess with the system, change the cooling and temperatures. But more importantly, do they have the ability to escalate privilege and move on to your home system? What about Nest? You know, I think that Nest, you know, has great promise. What I'm uh, concerned about is how much data that that's starting to collect on you and your home. Uh, and it just, you know, enables people to get more and more of a dossier of everything about you. But is it any more data than is being collected by your phone? Not necessarily, but it tells you more about how you like to, the temperature that you like to sleep and when you also are away because people set up the system on Nest to, you know, increase temperature when you're out of the home. Okay, so how do you protect yourself? in the world of the internet. Of yeah, so it's very easy to have these conversations and leave scared. But I think the important thing is to be prudent. Be cautious in what you do online. Post information, be professional, be responsible, and realize that everything about yourself that you post on a social media site is going to be there for quite some time. And when it comes to the internet of things and connected devices, you know, just determine what is needs to be really connected. And do you really need to take advantage of that IP connection? And last topic, Bitcoin. If you've got Bitcoin, 
How do you protect it and how do you protect yourself? So I think Bitcoin is a very nascent technology, and the idea of blockchain has great computing uh, promise, uh, but it's too early to determine really if it's going to be more secure. Many would suggest that it is more secure than the existing currency system, but at the same time we've seen people take advantage of Bitcoin for some illegal activity. So I would say to tread lightly with Bitcoin right now, go to a trusted provider of a Bitcoin bank, uh, and maybe so not, not take... Mt. Gox. Yes. That's, that's for sure. But can you really protect yourself from Mount Gox, something like Mount Gox happening? I mean, you know, I think it's hard because I think it's difficult to determine who is a trusted Bitcoin bank right now. Uh, I think that this is really the early stages. In many ways, it's the wild, wild west. Some are suggesting this is the next internet. I think it's too early to tell. All right, Brian White, I'm going to try to not walk away scared and just yeah. <laughs> take your advice. Turn off group principal. Thanks so much. Love this segment, Security 101.